Even if you love to bake, it can be challenging keeping fresh bread in the house. Today I'm going to show you how to take your two hands, a bowl and a wooden spoon and bake a large batch of bread dough. Enough for four loaves, but instead of baking it all today, we're going to freeze it. Once a week or so, you can thaw a piece of dough and bake a fresh loaf of homemade bread. That's right. A fresh loaf of homemade bread every week for a month and only one mess to clean up. And it doesn't take any special equipment beyond what you already have in your kitchen. Hi, I'm Michelle and I'm here to help you create your slice of country living wherever you live. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage, the sweet spot between old-fashioned skills and modern conveniences. If that sounds appealing to you, consider subscribing to my channel. Making bread by hand is certainly an old-fashioned skill. And if you have a bowl and a spoon, a freezer and an oven, you can keep your family supplied with homemade bread year-round. I'm specially dedicating this recipe to those of you who are new to baking with yeast, who are too busy to bake, or who may have had a bad experience and don't think you enjoy baking. I'm going to change your mind. You can do this. Mix up one large batch of bread dough once a month and keep your family in bread. That's only 12 times a year. I'm also dedicating this recipe to those of you who love to bake because freeing up time in the kitchen frees up time for other priorities and time is life. We're all looking for tips and ideas to help us put good nourishing food on the table inexpensively. So I knew I had to share my recipe for handmade whole wheat freezer dough. If you own a heavy duty stand mixer, you'll wanna see the sister video, how to make freezer bread dough and Ankas room mixer recipe. It covers all the heavy duty stand mixers and I'll put the link below for you so you can find it easily. But today we're using our hands and I have to say it is a pleasure to make bread by hand once you get into the rhythm. It's just so nice to keep things simple. It's also good exercise. This is a special recipe inspired by an older cookbook called Stocking Up by Carol Hupping. Over the years, I tinkered with the recipe and this is how I kept my family in fresh bread for years and I did it by hand. The recipe is available for you at my website, chocolateboxcottage.tv. Now let's go over the supplies that you need to make your first batch of freezer bread dough. It's a good idea to put your hair up before you begin. That's better. Now let's go over the supplies that you're going to need to mix up your first batch of freezer bread dough. You need a freezer, of course, because this is a freezer recipe, but the next most important piece of equipment you need is an extra large mixing bowl. Eight quarts is a good size. You need something that has enough room at the top so that when you're mixing the dough, the ingredients don't spill over. You can use a pottery bowl like this one, maybe you've inherited one from your grandmother. You can use an enamel dish pan, a plastic dish pan, a giant stainless steel salad bowl. Um, I've even used my grandma's antique bread pail. All of those will work just fine. The next most important piece of equipment you need is a wooden spoon. Make sure it's a sturdy one, it has a good long handle. If you happen to have a Danish dough whisk, that's even better. The shape of the wires make it easier to stir dough. You'll also need a bowl scraper or a dough card, two cookie sheets, extra large cookie sheets. And if you have the silicone liners for them, that's great. If not, that's fine too. Parchment paper or plastic wrap and two gallon size Ziploc freezer bags. Prepare space in the freezer for two large cookie sheets. Line the cookie sheets with silicone, plastic wrap, or parchment paper and set them aside. Label the gallon size freezer bags. This dough lasts for four weeks in the freezer. So look at the calendar, count four weeks ahead from today and mark that as a best by date on the bags. This is the date you'll want to bake the bread dough by because that is when the yeast is most active. Our ingredients today include three tablespoons of yeast, five and a quarter cups of liquid, and we're using two cups of milk and the rest as water, a quarter cup of molasses or honey, a quarter cup of olive oil or melted butter, four teaspoons of salt, three cups of bread flour or all-purpose flour, and nine cups of whole wheat flour. The total amount of flour is 12 cups, and you can adjust the ratio of white flour to whole wheat flour depending on what you're comfortable with in your family. We like three-fourths whole wheat 
to one quarter white flour. That works well for us. And today we're using freshly milled hard red whole wheat that I just ground earlier in my grain mill. Add the liquid to the bowl along with the yeast. Stir well with your spoon and then set it aside for a few minutes and allow the yeast to dissolve. Then add the sweetener, the fat, and the salt. Stir those together. And start adding the white flour a cup at a time. Stirring well after each addition. Now begin adding the whole wheat flour, a cup at a time, stirring well. Keep scraping down the sides of the bowl as you work to incorporate all that flour into the dough. We're about at the halfway point adding our whole wheat flour and you can see that the dough is getting thicker. I'm continuing to scrape down the side of the bowl as I stir. And we're getting down to the end of the flour. So I'm going to add that last cup for now and I'll reserve some to use as we need. And I'll walk you through that step by step process of hand kneading as well, in case you're new to bread making. Okay, the dough is really firming up. You can see that it's come away from the sides of the bowl and has formed a a good mass. It still has some dry flour, so I'm going to stir it a little bit more, making sure to scrape the bottom of the bowl to get all of that mixed in. This is where if you have the dough whisk, <laughs> you'll notice how much easier it is. The shape of the, of the whisk allows the dough to pass through, making the stirring motion more effective. But we're doing fine with the wooden spoon. Now we're going to pull the spoon out and give the dough a brief rest. We're just going to cover it up with a clean, lint-free towel and give it five or ten minutes. This little rest period will allow the bran particles in the whole wheat flour to absorb moisture and to soften, which will make our task of kneading much easier. Time to knead. This is the fun part. I oiled my work surface. We're using a table and I sprinkled some of the remaining flour on it. We're going to scrape the dough out of the bowl onto our prepared surface. And I'm using the table because that is a better height for me than the kitchen counter is. Gives me more leverage. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on my hands to keep the dough from sticking. And to knead, before you start, think posture. Make sure you're wearing comfortable clothes, comfortable shoes, that your sleeves aren't too long, and plant your weight into your feet, then pick up an edge of the dough away from you and press it down with either one or both hands. Oh, and I removed rings. It's best not to wear jewelry when you're kneading. After pressing down, rotate the dough a quarter turn, lift up another piece and press down. Just keep rotating, lift up the dough, press it away from you gently. You don't want to press through the dough. You just want to seal the dough to itself without breaking the skin. So that's all there is to it. You just keep rotating and pressing. And if you like, you can try the rocking motion to develop more gluten in your flour. That can be a little quicker way to get the kneading done. Just press and rock. And you'll see that the dough is already coming together quite nicely. Scoot a little bit more flour underneath there and continue kneading. The dough is starting to stick to my hands, so I'm gonna put just a little more olive oil on them. And then I'm also gonna lift the dough up and rub it underneath to keep it from sticking. If the dough does stick to the surface, you can always just use your dough scraper or your bowl scraper and scrape it clean and then apply a little bit more oil. I'm gonna knead for about 12 minutes since this is a large piece of dough. And the object is to preserve a smooth skin on the bottom side of the dough. So, let's go.
and the dough is telling me that it is done. It feels bouncy and resilient. It is still, still somewhat tacky, and this is a whole lot of whole wheat flour here, so that's okay. We don't want to take away all that stickiness. We want to leave some of that. So I'm going to stop right now and show you what we've got. We've got this big, beautiful mass of dough. It even smells good with that molasses in there. It's just lovely. Kneading becomes intuitive with practice. So be patient with yourself, keep practicing, and you'll get there. And at this point, you may want to wash your hands and then apply a little more oil to your palms. Pat the dough out flat and then divide it into four even pieces. You can either use your bowl scraper, your dough card, or a bench knife, or a big chef's knife, like what I'm using right here. Now take one piece and form it into a smooth ball. You can just repeat that kneading action you were just doing a minute ago to form that smooth ball like that. There we go. We've got all four of them shaped. Place two balls of dough on each of your prepared baking sheets and use the palms of your hand to flatten them out about an inch thick. This will help them, the dough freeze faster. Then cover with plastic wrap or parchment paper. Go around the edge of the baking sheet and make sure that it's sealed all the way around as well as the center. Now we need to run these out to the freezer right away. It's important to get them in the freezer as quickly as possible because you want to put the yeast to sleep. You want to save that yeast activity for when you're baking. Let the dough freeze for four hours or overnight on the cookie sheets and then bring them in and wrap them individually and get them in your labeled bags. Work quickly, get them back into the freezer. You don't want the dough to thaw while you're working with it. And then just pause and enjoy the feeling of knowing that your freezer is stocked with dough for a month's worth of baking. It is such a wonderful feeling and you earned it. To bake a loaf, you wanna take one package of dough out of the freezer the night before and let it thaw in the refrigerator on a plate. So let me show you real quick how to shape a piece of dough. I have a lightly oiled surface here and I'm putting the smooth side down and I'll just pat it out to release those big air bubbles. Fold it up into a rectangle. Pat it out and then just roll it up into a log, nice and tight. And uh, there we go. Get that into a greased bread pan and cover it with some of the wrappings that the dough was in and let it rise at room temperature until it is almost doubled. So then get that loaf into the oven. Baking directions are on my website on the printable recipe at chocolateboxcottage.tv. And this is what you end up with. Isn't this glorious? I think once you get in the habit of mixing up a large batch of bread dough once a month, you'll find out it's not too much trouble or too much mess to keep your house supplied with homemade bread. I hope this method is as helpful to you as it has been to me over the years. Thank you for joining me in the kitchen here today at Chocolate Box Cottage. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.